Good afternoon and welcome to KAUS Live. My name is Michelle Ponto and I'm part of the communications team here at KAUS. And I'm here today with Shozo Yokoyama, who is from the Emory Department of Biology. He's here visiting us as part of a conference that we're having, having at the university. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So you are here for a conference. The conference is Big Data Analysis and Evolutionary Biology. Tell me a little bit about what you have learned so far at this conference. I know you've been one of the keynotes and there are a number of other um, guest speakers here like you at the university. What has brought you all together? Well, I think uh, these days we do have a, a lot of DNA sequence data. So people would like to see them from different angles. So that's, that's why we have a computer scientist here and a biologist like me here. So, and some people work for both areas. So that's, that's the way meeting was, I think, set up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fields are kind of merging together to advance the research. Right. Merging together and moving together pretty fast, actually. Right. DNA sequence data coming out very fast from different animals mm -hmm. and plants. And plants. Okay. Yeah. And your work specializes in the evolution of color vision. Tell me a little bit about this. This is a, it's a fascinating field. It's, it's, evolution is so vast. Why did you pick this particular aspect of it? Right, I'm originally interested in evolutionary biology because a lot of animals are very, very different and they evolved in a different directions. Probably they're responding to a different environment. So color vision or vision becomes very important to well, to avoid the enemies and get the foods, all these things. It's one of the key characters, probably. So that's why vision comes in and the different animals to adapt to different environment. So then they do different, develop different color visions or dim light visions. So we can get into what animal did in the past. That's why we have a very different shapes of animals today. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to vision, animals uh, do do certain animals see things in different colors compared to to others? For example, what colors do birds see compared to um, a mammal? Right. So like mammals, most of us are color blind, except the primates. Right, and we cannot detect the UV. But as you know, insects are very good seeing UV. And a mouse can see UV, and the birds, some birds can see UV and others can't. But many fish can detect the UV. So different animals have a different characteristics. They acquired almost independently in different places. So that's kind of fascinating how they did and how it works. That is really interesting that it's, that it's, it's is it environmental that helps with the evolution? Um, Actually, the evolution occurs uh, by genetics. You have to have certain characters which respond to certain environment. So if you have a, in a dark o sea oceans, they have a special vision should develop to behave okay. But if you're in, uh, on the land, a lot of colors available, then they might use a lot of color vision, different types, so like a deep sea fish and uh, animals on land can be very different. Okay. Yeah. And now with um, big data and um, computations coming in, how is your research changing? Uh, big data, it's a good part and bad part. Good, good part of big data means you can get a lot of information in one shot. The interpretation can become very complicated, sometimes possibly superficial. So previously we used to do genetics, very slow movement of scientific development. Then the data provides very fast. If you are smart enough, you can extract a lot of information, but it can be very superficial potentially. But old fashioned genetic analysis can provide you more detailed, hardcore kind of fact or mechanism can come in. So they are merging. That's why we have to work together. Mm -hmm. So 
we are adjusting de depending on the development of this DNA sequencing is very, very fast today. That's interesting. I would have thought it would have been the opposite, that the details would come out now rather than using the more traditional ways. Uh, not necessarily. Because it's coming too fast, then we can respond too fast. OK. Yeah, so good part and bad part. Yeah. Were you involved with the human genome sequencing project? N not directly, no. Okay. But we do more different animals. OK. Right? OK. Yeah. So how is your university using uh, big data in genomics? Um, that's a little bit difficult to say. Well, some medical school uh, researchers, they try to use big data set to diagnose patients, probably, and uh, try to cope with the treatment as well. But still, infant stage. So I think that's the current picture. So we are waiting new development from other people, too. So okay. we're watching other people, what's happening. And how are you finding the, the, um, the merger or the combination of skill sets? Because the computational side is, is still kind of new. The genomic side, you, you know what you are waiting for, new things to develop. How is, the com how is it working with the, the, all the fields coming together? Right. It's not necessarily clear coming together part. So in some sense, everything kind of new to everyone. That's why this kind of meeting can bring people together so we can discuss how to approach to. But if other places, different part of the world, they do their own thing too. So we have to watch all the places, what's happening, so we can learn from each other. And a meeting is one of the good places to learn what's happening. Mm -hmm. Then new data set is there, too. It's not published yet. And the idea might be there, too. So meeting is pretty important in that sense. It's a, it's a way of sharing ideas and? Absolutely, yes. What kind of questions are, because um, you, and you were in a, there was a number of sessions going on and you were one of the keynote talks. What kind of questions are the students of today asking or the postdocs, the ones that are getting into the field in, in genomics? I don't think it's coming out too much. But I think that kind of section might be tomorrow okay. is set up. So okay. that might be quite interesting. Young people and old folks get together and start discussing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, just to see what their mindset is thinking, what they're, what they're thinking of, and what advice you can give them. Right. Yeah. Pretty often, I think we learn from a younger mind, which are they not trained well. That's a very good thing, too. So they have a come up with new things. Then we have to listen to it. So that's it goes true. both ways. Yeah, they see things differently, sharing of ideas. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing. Okay, now some of your work is also in quantum chemistry. What is that exactly? Right, that's a little bit complicated. Okay. But let me see. Uh, so we study uh, molecules which detect different colors, we call visual pigment. Then we can purify them in the laboratory. Then we see, put the mutation to see what kind of effect it has on the function. That is, wavelengths they can detect. But it, we can identify what kind of a mutation occurred and what kind of change, functional change occurred. We can do that rather, well, rather easily, I guess. But the amino acid changes or mutations, even if we can identify, we don't know what's happening inside the molecule. So chemistry can help that. So to do that, we have to set up the model in the X-ray crystallography. All this data set, now a new thing, uh, becomes very handy to evaluate. So that's the essence of chemistry comes in. Quantum chemistry is one method to evaluate what's molecule, what's happening inside the molecule. For example, water movement. So these things cannot detect by uh, genomics. 
right? So mm -hmm. chemistry contribute, connect real chemistry to DNA and function. So that's combined together. So that's another meeting we need. Yes, that is. It's a. It's interesting. So it's a. It's a big mix of all the fields coming together to uh, really build, really paint the picture. Yes. So it's. They're talking about the big data, but you have to really understand from different angles. So data comes out too fast in some sense. We cannot catch up. So more people can come in from a different field. I think that's the best. Yeah, merging of minds. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so your keynote was today. What was, what was the topic that you were on? And can you tell me a little bit about some of the highlights from what you spoke about. Yeah, so my field is combined with vision science and evolutionary biology. So we, are, we try to, well, organisms adapt to different environment. Then we have a lot of different kind of animals appear in, appeared in the past. Mm -hmm. So we are going to ask that how we can study such natural selection, for example, animal adapt to certain environment. We want to understand how natural selection works at the molecular level, organismal levels, and the gene levels, and chemistry levels, right? So all things should be connected. That's what I wanted to say to the people. And uh, we, we give different examples of like that things. Okay. Well, obviously, evolution is always is always happening. What has what kind of changes have you seen evolution evolution wise over the last I don't know throughout your your years of research from species mm -hmm. that were from a hundred years ago to now? What is anything really changing? Well, different well major change occurred when the DNA was discovered. So that everybody has to study at the DNA level before people just observed different things. Genetics analysis was there, but still DNA is brand new there. Okay, now today you can manipulate. So that's mo manipulate the molecules. Then we can study what kind of thing happened in the past. We can guess now pretty well. So that can be applied and to understand how natural selection occurred then functional change occurred. So if I go to very different field, then probably we can study how disease is caused, for example. Then we can understand the mechanisms, then the cure come. So it's more or less the same thing to study human genetics and evolution. And we use different animals to study humans, for example. So all these things, I think, changing again very quickly. Mm -hmm. That's a very good thing, uh, I think. There's lots of change. Uh, one question is um, that I have is has to do with disease, because the types of diseases that animals or people get has changed over the centuries. And obviously, that must have something to do with genetics, because it's, you know, those have been able to survive now those old diseases are gone and now there's new diseases coming out how do you do, how do you factor those kind of things into your research or are you seeing how um, genetics can play a role with uh, cancer or with Alzheimer's or some of the common diseases that we have nowadays right so one thing we can propose uh, as an evolution can help us is evolution use all these things DNA from DNA to functions, all these things in the past. Human, we never know what they did. So we try to understand what they did. Then disease case, you can trace back different animals, for example, what happened in the animals like mouse and human, you can compare them. And they may have the same disease, like a cancer. You can even go to fish. They develop a cancer too. So you start looking into all these things, then evaluate their mechanisms, how it works. Then you can apply to human too. So that's why evolution is connect everyone, right? That's the role of evolution mm -hmm. in how we understand the disease too, or any other function. 
So that's connecting different animals so we can st understand the human as well. So that's mm -hmm. what we call model systems, right? That makes sense. Yeah. So you're really looking towards the past to figure out what can possibly happen in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The past will tell us what's going to happen too. But for, first we like to understand what's happened, right? Okay. What advice would you give students who are interested in this field? Uh, this field means like... Um, evolution, evolutionary biology. Evolutionary biology. Yeah. If I want to be very frank, I will say, don't read the textbooks much, right? Then they get into the old-fashioned um, approach. Then they try to understand what they can do using old approach in terms of thinking-wise. So my drastic suggestion to them is don't study too much. So like if you bring in from a different field, like a physics or chemistry, then try to understand, if they can understand evolution without reading textbooks, they'll have a new field there, I think. So they shouldn't learn too much. It's very sort of antisocial kind of <laughs> <laughs> approach. So, but that the new mind comes that way, That's interesting. I think. Yeah. So almost organic, learn. Learn by learning, basically. Yes. Yeah. So ask animals, right, what they did, for example, right? That's the fundamental part of the evolutionary biology, ask to animals. Don't think up anything. They will tell you if you are smart enough. That's true. One last question. Where do you see the field is going? You've already, things have already changed drastically with the technology that's coming out and um, the number of discoveries that are coming out in this field. There's there are numerous, like just like a new one almost every couple of weeks or whatever. Where do you see the field going? Where, how is it going to shift? So, how the new discovery comes, that's kind of related then to your question. Mm -hmm. Then I will still say, try to understand animals, organisms well, deep. Then that means you are discovering some important mechanisms then I think animals is a real car uh, important thing to really understand. That's why evolution becomes important. We cannot make it up things. Organism already worked many, many years, right? So we are just following them, in my opinion. So we want to understand them better. So young mind should get into, really try to understand what they did. There is a Nobel Prize come out. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This has been a really enlightening conversation. There's, there's so much to, to your work. There's so much to evolution that, that we can learn from. And I don't think we'll ever be able to learn everything that's possible from animals. There's just so much to, to take in. You went from DNA and now you're in, in genes. Yes. There could be something else that's even smaller and so more I precise. So I think we have to expect to young ones, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah new minds. New minds. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And I hope you enjoy your stay at Cows. Yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will be live tweeting the rest of the sessions on um, our Twitter feed, so please follow us there. Thank you.